Can't look, man. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Can't look. <laughs> got it. You gotta walk in backwards. <laughs> what? You gotta walk oh, in backwards. Come on. It just says so much about the fact that these are even sitting here right now that you guys are not only the right team for the job, but you might be the only team for the job. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> Today has been an emotional day for all of us. Finishing this project and witnessing Dan's reaction when he finally saw the creation he envisioned nearly nine years ago made me incredibly proud to be even a small part of it. This project started as just something cool we were making for a famous drummer. At first, I didn't think much beyond that. I assumed that his fame alone would make it special, but I was wrong. These messages are the first time Dan reached out to us. This was on the verge of him giving up on this entire project altogether. Even with a working 3D printed model, his final goal was to have a single piece snare drum made entirely out of brass. After research for shops with the right equipment, that's when he stumbled upon our channel. And after several calls and emails, Dan and Barry finalized the design and we were ready to get started machining. We started out by putting it in our nine axis mill turn where we prepped the stock. Then we moved it over to the five axis machine where we built a fixture for the first operation. Next, we installed the material onto the fixture and then we machined the first op, which was roughing the outside and roughing and finishing the inside of the drum. After that, we took it out of the machine in order to build another fixture to hold on the inside of the drum so we could finish that outside, which turned out to be some custom pie jaws for our four jaw chuck. And now we've arrived at the final operation, which is the most exciting part, and that is finishing the presentation side of the drum or the outside. And it's actually perfect timing too, because we just got in this MCD tool from Horn, which I'm hoping is going to give this drum a mirror-like finish. And that is the exact standout quality that a project like this deserves. So you'll see a lot of similar tool paths from the previous videos. We're going to come in and semi-finish the outside of this drum so we have a nice consistent surface all the way around in order to come in with our MCD tool. And the last tool that's going to come in is that MCD tool. It's only going to be taken off about one thousandths of material and it's a very fine step over it. We're talking like two thousandths here. Now this operation is going to take a really long time so we're going to kind of speed through this. All right, so it's game day and Dan just got here. So we're gonna let him in and really hope he likes this. And uh, looks like Titan's pulling up now too. So show's about to start. You never know when he's listening. Good okay, man, pleasure to meet you. Long drive, huh? First pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah, uh, about 24 hours total. And they already got the cameras on you? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, fine with me, man. I'm, I'm wide awake. When we think of people like Dan, we typically only see them for the brief moments they're on stage performing for us. From that, we try to form opinions about who they are, but with so little information, anything we come up with is really just a stereotype. But throughout the making of this project, and especially today, I got to know Dan on a personal level. That completely shifted my perception of this entire project and made me realize it's much more than just making something cool for a famous person. What we're actually doing here is bringing to life a one-of-a-kind musical instrument that's never been done before. An instrument that will stand the test of time, far outliving any of us, with a story to tell about its creation and the journey it's been on. This drum is the culmination of nearly a decade of research, development, and passion from a truly remarkable individual. Look, man. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Yeah, got it. Got it. You gotta walk in backwards. <laughs> what? You gotta oh, walk God. in backwards. Come on. Come on. You know what? Yeah, I'll lead you. I'll lead you. I'll lead you. 
tr I trust you. I trust you. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. My heart's pounding. The first render I made of this looked like that, but it was on my computer screen. And it's like, I never thought I would see it look like this, like in, in person. I mean, it's one of the first things we talked about was like, hey, just so like uh, managing expectations, it's, it's, it's gonna be Matt when it's done, you know? Um, and this is not Matt, <laughs> this is crazy. So the setup on this too, it's like at the beginning, you don't know how you're gonna hold something that's so flimsy. This thing's built like the craziest aerospace part. So literally the most <laughs> tightest tolerance musician piece probably ever aerospace, made. That's what I'm talking about, Yeah, man. you know what I mean? But then there's costs in it, you know? So like, you might look at this and you might be like, hey, let's actually machine it. it. <laughs> we machine it faster and, and maybe do a nickel plate or something. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, or totally. something. Yeah. To me, a lot of people do it, but I'm so much about the art of it that when you, I don't like plating because I feel like then it could be anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It could be you made anywhere. Plastic. It could be made in China. You know what I mean? I didn't so, even know that until recently. You yeah, can plate exactly. plastic. So it's like, if you have just a machine piece raw, just like, like I do my oil paintings and stuff, but there's something about pencil drawing. If you can do a crazy pencil drawing and you do like eyelashes and, and get that depth, that's talent. Yeah. You just know that artist is on a different level. Yeah. When you start splattering paint, it's like, there's a lot of people that can do that. Of course, there's levels to it, but machining is like that. When you have a raw piece of material that has not been touched by any chemicals, and it is absolutely a mirror. And, and we, we talked about that too. That's, Remember that's we had, art, we had that know? conversation about putting the, the clear coat. I want to keep talking about it, but I also want to shake your hand. Thank you. Shake his hand, man. Thank you, yeah. Barry. Wherever you are, thank you. <laughs> to the warehouse. Barry! <laughs> That's our intercom system. Barry! It's beautiful, man. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sorry that Jesse had the machine. It could have been a real work of art, but I don't. I, mean, I don't know anymore. I'm sitting here looking at it. I think <laughs> you did all right. <laughs> yeah. Too bad we can't find a good drummer to test them out. <laughs> oh yeah. It feels like it feels like you screwed it down to the table. <laughs> yeah. I, let, me, let me let me start with the aluminum one so I don't struggle. Oh, that see, okay, dude, that's crazy. The difference in weight. All right. I don't know if y'all knew knew to do this. It's like put your ear up to that. Ooh, still going. It's still going. It's gonna go for a long time. So so uh, so wood shell would have all different types of tones depending on like the type of material, the thickness of it, how many plies, one ply, 12 plies. Um, it, will t it can tell someone like me a lot about what it's gonna sound like. However, I don't have much experience with um, sh uh, metal shells that are this thick. So I, I have an idea of what these will sound like, but not based off of that. But the idea that uh, any wood shell or even my, my uh, plastic 3D printed shells, that will go, that'll last maybe for like a second and a half. So ding, it's done. Like you said, that's like a bell. Dude, this is embarrassing. This is like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so this one, I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna be able to do that. Cause I can't rest, I can't rest it on my finger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. I can't, I'm, I'm gonna rest it on my, see how. Oh, yeah, do it. That. <laughs> so dense. Ooh, ooh. dude, dude, that's like a that is crazy. crazy babe. Put your ear like, put your ear right there. Ooh, that is deep. Yeah. That is nuts. I'm I'm putting my elbow put, put into your, my put hip. Your, put your ear like right there. You hear it? Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can rest it. I'm gonna do it over the table. I'm gonna see if I can rest on my finger. Nope. Oh, <laughs> I'll break my finger. <laughs> Dan is not just an incredible drummer, he's a down-to-earth, genuine person who, from the moment you meet him, makes you feel like you've known him for years. He's a loving father and husband with a surprisingly sharp engineering mind, evidenced by the two patents he holds. He's a person with an incredible patience and understanding, you know, qualities that make him just as exceptional a teacher as he is a performer.
Crazy man, Whoa. sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank all of you so much. This is this is like absolutely a dream come true. This being able to hold this thing today and, and play it just now is like it's crazy. It's, it's just it's unreal. Dan is a humble, multifaceted individual with many talents who just happens to also be part of a famous band. Getting to know the real Dan Palovich and understanding what this project means to him has been the most rewarding part of this entire journey. It's what truly makes this project special. And I couldn't be prouder that we're the ones who got to bring his vision to life.